Okay, so the last time I tried to do this, I ended up making a paste out of liquid, and I got some decent results, but you can see that the distribution is not good. You wouldn't want to put this side up so that people could see this side. Um, so what I decided to do was buy a little airbrush kit because it has an adjustable nozzle and well this is a crappy camera phone you can adjust it right here and the guy said that a paint sprayer wouldn't do the right thing unless I bought a nozzle for like texture so I figured this was 15 bucks I mixed it up really really thin I put a coat on and then I dried it with this until it just started turning matte not until it was completely gray and you can see cleanup's going to be really easy because this is just dust uh, I can just wipe it up with a cloth or wait until it dries and vacuum it um, I use this mineral spirit and now what I'm going to do is go in here and dry that until it is completely dry and then I'm going to center it with the air assist off and I'll show you what it looks like. Alright, so I'm going to show you how I'm getting the image over to the laser cutter. I've got this completely legit copy of Corel Draw X7. I'm in Windows 7 X64 and I found this silhouette which is how I figured I would just go ahead and test doing this centering with the uh, with the uh, powder coat paint. Um, so this was the first one that wasn't a person silhouette. So that's what I got. I uh, copied it, pasted it, and uh, to make this, this is going to be a raster. So what we're going to do is we're going to raster over this entire wolf in order to turn it into a black silhouette on the acrylic. Um, and I've got a box around and the way that you can make sure that it will make a vector cut to cut out the square around is to set it to hairline and you want your document to be in RGB mode the way that you do that is go up here to color management and uh, you can set your default settings to RGB or you can just set the the document that you're working in to RGB. Um, it's I think it's better to start off and just RGB. Uh, it works better uh, if you're going to do the uh, color profile in the print. So what I'm doing is I'm not doing a combined cut because I'm just going to center the uh, the wolf and I'm going to do it at different different. Uh, powers on the laser and I'm going to compare those and then I'm going to cut them out at the end. So the way the way that I'm going to do this is we go in to print and uh, we see that we have our engraver set up. We go to our preferences and for my raster what I'm going to start with is 100% speed. I'm going to go I suppose I could go all the way down to 20. Let's go 20. We're going to do three of these. We're going to do. I know. I know that the the paint adheres at 50%. Um, I'm just trying to find out a better way to do this so that we don't get ridges on the outside, so that we only center the paint that we want to. So I'll go. I'm going to go 20, 30, and 40% top-down standard for the raster image dithering. Um, yeah, and that's it. And when I go to do my vector cut, I just found this information on the Epilogue website. We are going to do that at 12% speed, 100% power, 5000. Actually, I'm going to turn it up because I know that it cuts at a higher speed. Um, and the problem is, is that after they're cut, actually during the cut, they uh, it curls. So that's a problem. The heat spreads very quickly, and it warps the plastic. Although it wouldn't be 
hard to simply uh, hit it with a heat gun and you'd be done. But right now we're going to raster this and uh, we'll see what it looks like. I'm going to do the 20, 30, and 40 and then I'll take a video of that. Alright, so this has been much more successful than I thought. Uh, this is the back side and all of those imperfections you see are just scuff, like scuffs, things that I put on there. Uh, this is a mirror finish. This is at 20%. As you can see, there aren't any noticeable outlines. And uh, the small detail here hasn't been covered. This is 25%. And it's really hard to tell on this camera, but this small hole is a little bit smaller because of the ridges that are on this one. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's it's noticeable that there's a ridge along the edge. So, and as we go up to 30%, this has a noticeable edge, a very noticeable edge. And I actually had to rub this small part off um, until it broke so that you could even notice that there was a hole. And again, it's impossible to see, but it's much smaller. So I'm going to try some flexion tests and see if there are any problems now. Okay, well, I decided I was going to try and bend it around this beautiful porter that I've been drinking with the uh, heat gun. But as you can see, apparently it was not completely cured. This is the 20%. A lot of it came off on the bottle. I don't think that would be a problem in low temperature situations, but high temperature situations, I'm sure you want this to be fully cured. So, uh, I think that's my last note. Uh, yeah, this was pretty rewarding, and I think it's going to work out well. I think I'll probably go with the 25% for the power, or, um, yeah, for the power. Um, and I think this is going to work out pretty well. Hope you enjoyed it.